Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to Jerry's Live. Today's episode is 181, and we are going to be going over impasto painting with acrylics. So if you are unfamiliar with impasto painting or what that means, uh, quick, you know, kind of catch up. It's just painting really, really thick. <laughs> it's the art of laying down your paints to where it actually retains texture. And as it dries, it doesn't actually level out. You continuously, as I've showed here a little bit, um, kind of just keep that texture on your canvas or your surface. So uh, this also can be done with oil paints as well. But today we're going to be using acrylics, uh, if that's something that you'd be interested in, in seeing. I do believe Amy has probably had a previous episode with that. I don't have that episode on me right just this second. But I'm sure the, the Jerry's Live crew here might be able to look that up. Sorry! Um, but uh, if you're interested in seeing me do that, I can absolutely do another episode on it. It's super fun. So um, let's go over some art supplies, guys, because um, we have a lot to go through. There is a lot of options when it comes to impasto painting. There are a lot of different ways to do this. Now, anything I'm showing you here, if you are interested in seeing um, kind of it on the website and seeing uh, if you want to purchase it, there is a code. If you go to jerrysartorama.com and you type in the search bar JL181, the entire teacher cart showing all of this is going to be available to you. So you can just click and add it to your cart, buy it really easily. Or if you're just kind of not sure what I'm talking about, um, you can absolutely go check it out over there. So with that being the case, uh, there are, like I said, a lot of different ways of doing impasto painting, specifically in acrylics. Uh, there are all types of mediums that you can use alone and apply them straight to your canvas or you can actually mix them straight into your paints to create a, an impasto kind of paint. Uh, just because acrylics, uh, the majority of what you're going to find on uh, the market, it has a, a kind of a self-leveling. Like if you put it on your canvas, it's going to squash down. You're not going to retain those peaks and like the, the textures that you want when you impasto paint. So there are paints also specifically designed for impasto painting as well, which is what I'm going to be using today. Now, um, I do know Amy has gone over all of the acrylic mediums, and I do know what that episode is. It is JL17, JL17. So if you want to go check out all the different acrylic mediums uh, that she went over, there are so many. It's, it's sky's the limit. There are a lot of options. Because of that, I'm not actually going to be using any mediums. Uh, I'm just specifically going to use paint and paint alone. I'm not mixing anything into these just because that's a lot to go over and that would be a whole different episode. So what I'm going to be using today is Lucas Krill Pastos. I'm going to actually use the, uh, the little six set here. Now this is a really fun way to kind of just dip your toe into the water, so to speak. If you want to test this out, uh, this is a really fun kit. Uh, the colors that they come with. You get the white, you get the black, you get a blue, a red, a yellow, and a yellow ochre. Now, they are not primaries, specifically. Uh, they do have primary colors, which I wrote down. There's a cyan blue, lemon yellow, and magenta red. On the website, on Jerry's Artorama, you can actually see the word primary in parentheses when you go to, to, to look at the, uh, the different colors that they have. So, if you are looking for primaries, they have them, it's just not in this set specifically, but uh, these are some ultramarine blue. We have a matter lake hue, which is the red, and then yellow ochre, like I said, and then the permanent yellow light. So those are the colors I'm gonna be using. And then I also happen to have really big tubes <laughs> that uh, we had floating around in the studio here. So I grabbed those two just to show you. Uh, the cool thing with impasto painting is that you can use a lot of squishy paint and get those textures. The one thing is that I, once you figure out the colors that you like to use a lot, I would suggest you get big tubes because you are going to kind of go through your paint pretty quickly. Um, but I had just a couple uh, extra colors. Um, I honestly don't think I added those to the teacher card, but I will do that afterwards just so you guys kind of know what I'm using. <clears throat> um, with that, there's also uh, a couple other videos I forgot to mention. Um, if you go onto Jerry's Artorama, 
YouTube channel. If you look at the videos with Bob Rankin, he also does impasto painting, which is super fun. He does a lot of uh, underwater scenes because he's a diving guy and he loves ocean and all of it's very uh, inspired by the sea, which is gorgeous and so textural. You really want to touch those paintings. <laughs> but um, he's a really incredible artist and they've got quite a few of his videos. So you should go check those out on Jerry's Artorama YouTube channel. Uh, now, let's let's keep going. So uh, because I actually wasn't using the primaries on my paints, um, I did swatch this if you want to go to the overhead view. Um, so I like to do a swatch of all my colors just to kind of mix everything together just to see what they're going to do. Now, these are just like these two colors mixed together and then it, it forms a grid. So like yellow ochre plus this red, if I go down, that's the color that it makes. Um, the black with white, clearly there's a gray. <laughs> so this is just me kind of testing it out and seeing what the colors will actually do that are in the kit. And then I start making my own mixes over here and then making notes. Cause if I start mixing more than one color, I wanna know what I'm doing as well as if I'm doing a little bit more blue uh, you know, if I'm doing yellow and white and just a touch of yellow with that, these are just my notes personal. And then, um, if you can actually see, it's hard to kind of tell, um, this actually has quite a lot of texture, which is so fun. Um, and this is just the paint alone. So this paint is designed to actually, uh, retain all of that, you know, the, the textures uh, and as it dries, it doesn't shrink down and contract. So that being the case, uh, that was our paints. Let's talk about service. All right. Uh, we are going to be using the Da Vinci Pro panels. The reason why I went panels on this is because when you use impasto painting and you start putting it on canvas, the canvas, depending on the size, like smaller canvases like this, uh, are pretty structurally sound just because the, um, the, the actual structure of it takes up a lot of space and there's not a lot of loosey-goosey uh, canvas, but this is a solid structure. When it gets bigger and you start having bigger areas of the canvas and you start putting really heavy acrylics or even when you're doing the oils, your canvas will sag. Um, and it's, it's very, very frustrating and you have to put in stretcher bars and kind of stretch it back out. and. Um, it's just, it's a nightmare to deal with. So the way that I avoid that altogether is by using an actual panel. So this is a hard structure that uh, there's going to be no sag at all. Um, then at the same time, I'm going to be working on this, but I also grabbed a bunch of little ones. Now, the reason why I grabbed a bunch of little ones is because as I'm mixing a bunch of paint on here and applying it to my panel, I'm probably going to have some leftover. I I don't really like to throw my paints away. <laughs> I don't like waste and I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. So what I do is I have these little panels sitting around and if I have just any extra, I'll just blob it on there and get some texture. That's actually how I did this because um, I was painting this one and I had that like kind of bubblegum pink. And so I had a lot of it actually left over because I realized I wanted little flowers, not bigger ones. So this was actually bubblegum pink and I did the texture on it, and then I actually went in and painted the gradient over the surface as, after it had actually dried. So that's a fun little surface that I can now continue a painting back on with uh, the impasto paints. So then I have uh, tape, which I will show you what I'm gonna do with that in a second. Uh, you can probably see it here where I actually Gave myself a little bit of a border. I'm gonna do that again on here, but I'm gonna do it in a slightly different manner. You don't have to have a border, clearly. Um, I just really love it when the impasto kind of breaks that frame. It's, it's a little bit more of a visual interest, and that's just my personal preference. You are not married to that idea. You can absolutely just cover the whole surface with paint, like I did on this one. Um, the other things that I have, are how to actually apply and mix your, your paints. I'm not using a brush today. I'm gonna to be using the Color Shaper set of, how many are in here, five? No, six, 
Did I take one out? I might have taken one out. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be six of them, or is it five? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. No, there's five. Okay. I just, I thought there were six for a second. My bad. Ignore that. So we're going to be using the, the color shapers. Um, these are really fun. Uh, let me take one out so I can kind of show you. So these are kind of like a brush, uh, except for the very end is a rubber little tip. They uh, come in a firm and a soft version. Uh, this is the firm. I like the firm personally, just because I want a kind of a solid surface to really uh, kind of squish my paint around on. But it even the firm it has a good amount of like wiggle to it. So um, these are really fun to kind of manipulate the paint around on. Then of course we need palette knives. Palette knives are the fun way we're going to be not only mixing the paint, but we're going to be blobbing it on. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. I have. Just a couple of um, palette knives here with a couple different um, shapes to them. Uh, you might have your own personal preference. Maybe you want a round, but you want it really big, or you want uh, the square, but you want that really big, or maybe you want it smaller if you're working on smaller canvases. Uh, it's all personal preference. Now, I also did, if you want to just, again, kind of test this uh, process out a little bit, I did add a set of palette knives in the teacher's cart and I also added each one of these individually in case you really loved the size and the shape of them and you wanted to get that as well. So besides that we also have uh, these are the Princeton Catalyst wedges and then these are the contour. So these these are made out of silicone as well they have nice little um, uh, flexibility to them which is really fun but they have all of these different uh, edges that you can uh, kind of go back in and scrape your paint with and that leaves such a cool texture um, and then we have a little bit of a smaller one and these uh, these are just a couple that we had lying around the studio again but they have so many different options that um, I'm just showing you a, a couple but uh, you know you can go check them out and uh, see what else they have to offer. So let's get this off of here. Slide in my wrap beforehand. All right, so there is my, I'm using the ultra smooth gesso panel. So the surface itself is nice and smooth. There is not a whole lot of texture to this, um, but there will be very soon. All right, so uh, the other things I'm using, uh, I also have this uh, Big Squeeze. I don't know if I added this to the cart either. I'm sorry. If I didn't, I will add it there because this, as an artist, is an awesome tool. Uh, just if you check this out. So when I, especially when I'm using really big tubes, because they are uh, the metal tubes, it's really hard to kind of squeeze out every last drop of your paint. This is a paint saver. Um, as you can see, this is where my thumb was, and I was squeezing it out as I was um, kind of doing these testers for you guys. But I know there's still some paint in there. So if I actually take this and you can see that I've already been crimping it. And lay on, oh, wrong way. Start going down. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure either. Um, and then I just kind of go up just to kind of squeeze all my paint back up into the top of that tube. So now uh, I can have an easier way of getting my paint out and I'm not going to waste any because waste is not good, especially when we're paying for paint. Come on guys. Other than that, I do have a tub of water just to kind of dump my tools in uh, if I need to clean them quickly. And then I have a box of easy wipers. I love these, these are awesome. So uh, it's also got this sweet punch out to dispense thing that you have to actually punch. It's what well, you, don't, I guess you don't have to, but it's fun. You should punch it. So uh, these are really awesome. I like to use these instead of paper towels, just because, especially with this technique, um, paper towels are just a little bit more absorbent and they kind of soak up your water if you have that. And I like these because I don't burn through them as fast. Um, and it's a little bit more eco-friendly, so. 
good for good for the environment good for me so uh oh the other thing i wanted to show you is da vinci panels with the raw birch i wanted to test out to see if you could just apply the paint straight to the surface without actually having to prime it at all and you can and it works beautifully so that is that let's get painting guys um actually you know what i take the back i'm not gonna get painting just just yet i do need to have a serious talk with you guys about a giveaway let's talk about that all right free money free money it is a hundred thousand dollar giveaway that we are uh going on right now and it ends this sunday coming up uh february 14th at like midnight it's well 11 59 p.m midnight just do it now so you can get this out of the way and just possibly win a thousand dollars so a hundred artists are going to receive one thousand dollars amex gift card so it's amex not a specific jerry's art rama gift card you don't have to spend it on art supplies the reason why is because the jerry goldstein foundation and jerry's art rama are partnering to give back uh we definitely wanted to empower artists to uh, kind of be a little less stressed about if you need to pay off a bill, if you need to pay your studio bills, um, like to actually have a physical place to paint, if you want to buy food with it, if you uh, want to buy all the art supplies, you absolutely can. So all you have to do is log in. Actually, the, the team is gonna be putting all of the links in the description below in the chats uh, for you guys to check out. But all you have to do is sign in, you kind of follow the instructions, you fill out basic contact information, you share a, an example of your friend or your own art. You can actually nominate yourself. We're cool with that. Uh, and then you just kind of click the go button and boom, you have the ability to possibly win $1,000, which is so exciting. And I please, please do it because I'm not allowed to win this, but I hope all of you do. And it's, it, I mean, free money, come on. Now let's get painting. <laughs> now that we have the seriousness, out of the way. So I'm going to start with tape, um, but I'm not going to be super precise with it. Oh, it really sticks on there, doesn't it? Okay, so what I'm going to actually do, nope, stay tape. Ah, sorry. Struggling with tape. Don't judge me. I'm going to actually cut this at sort of an angle. Should have probably had these pre-cut. So use. It's really sticky. It's also not a straight line, but hey, it's art. No judgments, right? I think that's enough to go across the, oh geez. So one thing with this tape is that once you stick it to itself, it's really hard to remove. All right, I think that's enough. So I'm gonna actually, oops, nope, I want it to actually go all the way off the edge. Do something like that. It's like really sticky tape. That's a mess. My bad. <laughs> Foiled my tape. All right, I'm gonna actually keep it attached to that for just a second. So I'm kind of cutting it at an angle. It's not a straight line, clearly. Yeah. And that, oh, I was trying to go off the edge there. Here we go. All right, so I'm not kind of, uh, just chunks of this background kind of taken out. So not super precise. Actually, I do want to cut it off that right there. This is a lot easier if you use an exacto blade, just FYI. Maybe if I actually just rip it. Oh no, don't don't stick. Don't stick. All right. Emmy struggles with tape. Okay, that is good enough. So you can see my, my tape stripes. They're not perfect. I don't want perfect. 
I want it to be a little bit messy, although this one, see how my, my edge kind of, it ends right before it gets to that edge. I do want it to go fully off the edge. There we go. There we go. Polar allied and paint time. So I want to actually use, oop, I think I scratched the surface with my, my ring. Oh, that's a, another thing. I want to take your jewelry off because this is a little bit messy, which is okay. It's fun. All right, so I'm going to be using um, this one mix that I um, did before where it's the black, the iron oxide black, the ultramarine blue, and a little bit of the titanium white. There is more blue than the, um, the black, I believe, as my notes say. This is why I make notes. So, big old blob of blue. Smaller blob of black, but still big blob. And we're gonna do some white. leave my white right over here. I might need that quickly. All right, then I'm gonna just take my, uh, this is the S61 palette knife, and I'm going to just squish this around. Now the cool thing, when you are actually mixing your paints, um, you don't have to fully mix them. Like, the, it's, I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of a glare on the, the overhead, but like, Look at that gorgeous mixture. Like all those colors kind of coming together. You can actually keep that on your palette and not mix it fully, um, which I think I'm gonna do. Just because it's fun. It's a little bit more interesting. Oh, well that was, it's gonna go right there. And then I'm just going to blob it on. Oops, I got a little bit more black. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now, even though it looks like I had a ton of paint, I'm already almost all out. So, the one thing with this is that it is probably better to mix more paint than you think you need, because you probably are gonna use it. Um, and again, like I have these little canvases here. If I have more paint than I actually need, then I will um, just blob it on there and kind of get my next piece ready. Now, I'm going to also take a little blabby of that. Because I didn't actually mix all of that perfectly, I don't have to worry about my, um, my mixes being perfect again, which is cool. And plus, it's still wet, so I can kind of go over it again. But I am going to kind of squeeze that paint out just like that. I did add that to the teacher credit for you, so it's amazing. Yay! Perfect. Thank you, Katie. She added the big squeeze into the teacher's cart, so paint saver. It's awesome, guys. Especially with these, um, the metal tubes, you know? All right, we're gonna do another blobby of white. Oop, and I'm dropping stuff. Will you repeat what colors you're using for them? For this right here, mm -hmm. it is iron oxide black, the uh, ultramarine blue, deep. I just double checked that, and then a titanium white. It's more blue than black and just a little blob of white. So it gives me a nice desaturated kind of smoky gray blue kind of a situation going on, which is lovely. Like it, like it. The other thing is I'm not gonna really worry about this coming over the edges either. Um, if you are worried about the edges getting paint on them, you can always tape that off as well. Um, this is just a fun technique that I'm going to, I like to call it squishing paint around. It's way less intimidating if you're just like, I'm squishing paint, it's fine. Now, I clearly have a plan for the center there. I'm gonna actually take a little bit of this Matter Lake Hue 
and mix it in. I'm gonna actually grab this. Uh, this is the F57 palette knife. Nice long uh, uh, blah, blah, blade part. Spatula? But spat, spatula, spatula. I believe it's called a spatula, <laughs> right? Now that black just kind of ate up all of my red, so I'm definitely going to need more red. Question while you're doing that. All right, what you got? Susan would like to know how fast does the paint dry? Well, thank you, Susan. Um, that is a really, 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 really good question. Um, the thing with this paint is that, like, as you can see, my blue is still, I can still manipulate it. Um, it is acrylics. Acrylics dry fast. Now, depending on how, like, how thick you really lay the paint down uh, is going to determine how quickly it dries. Um, it's, it's kind of an experiment type of a thing. I have ran into, pretty sure the Lucas Pastos dries a little bit faster than I'm, I guess, kind of used to with the impasto painting, but I've only ever done this with um, using mediums. So maybe it's just the mediums that I was mixing into my paint, um, but this, it does dry fairly quickly. Um, but it's, I mean, it's still manipulating. So it's not, it's not dry in a heartbeat, you know, you still have some time, but, um, I'd say this right here, probably within the realm of 30 minutes to an hour is going to be hundred percent dry. That's pretty quick. It, yeah. Especially for how thick I'm putting this on. All right. So, Ooh, look at how pretty when that kind of purpley red comes into that desaturated gray blue. Oh, so pretty. I'm just shifting my canvas around just because at this angle, I'm finding it a lot easier to drag just the edge of my palette knife. So I'm not digging in. I'm not um, really putting a whole lot of pressure. I'm just kind of letting it slide across the surface. Now, depending on the application that you're trying to do, you might vary the pressure and the angle or kind of how you apply it. Um, that's all personal preference, but um, it's, that is kind of what I'm going for. So kind of a darker center that fades out into this nice purpley gray blue situation. Um, the other thing I like to do, um, I honestly haven't tried it after this is fully dry, but normally I pull my tape off when it's still wet. Um, so there's a big chunk of wet paint on my, on my tape. I'm just going to toss that in my trash bucket down here. But, um, I haven't actually attempted to let it fully cure before I pull the tape off. I've always just pulled the tape while it's wet. So that might be something that I would have to experiment with if somebody's interested to see if it still removes nice and clean or... Cause this is a very smooth surface. It might have the ability to kind of pick your paint up just a little bit. Um, but just remove it when it's wet and you're good. So there we go. There is my background that I am going to um, apply. I'm gonna allow this to dry 100% and then I'm going to apply um, additional paint on top of that. And that's exactly how I got uh, this guy when I did the background here. Um, I, I just, I think it was just ultramarine blue. I can kind of see where I scraped in um, just a little bit. It's, it's probably really dark on camera, but I can see right here, I got really thin. Um, maybe you can see it better on this one, yeah. So I got a little bit thinner in spots and I can see that blue kind of just barely coming through, but it's, it's super dark. Um, so if you wanted that to be a lot brighter, you just need to add just a touch of white to your ultramarine and that would uh, allow that to happen. Now, before I do anything, 
I am going to pop out one of these little five by sevens and I'm going to use up the rest of this paint because I don't want to throw it away. But I am just going to blot it on the whole thing. Do, 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 do. Squishy paints. Yeah, so I can actually feel um, this paint is getting thicker already. And I can feel on some spots on the canvas, or on the, uh, the mixing palette here, I can feel it's getting um, a little bit of uh, hard spots. So it, like I said, it is acrylic. It will dry fairly quickly. Um, but as you can see, I am still manipulating it and it's been, how long? Not long. All right. I'm actually surprised how fast it dries. Yeah. I expected it to take way longer. No, it actually, it does definitely. Actually, that brings us to a very good question. Ooh, we got um, Kathy Jackson asked, uh, could you just use regular heavy body acrylics? Heavy body acrylics are actually meant for a thicker application. So uh, that's one of those paints that are actually designed to kind of go on thicker and retain their texture. Um, just like the Lucas Pastos. Uh, but I personally find that Lucas Pastos is just slightly thicker. Maybe it's just in my head, but I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> um, but the cool thing is, is that even if like Lucas Pastos isn't thick enough for you, you can mix in the mediums. So if you want to retain more, even more texture than you're already getting, you do need to, to switch over to most likely the, um, oh, what is it called? The extra heavy, extra heavy, because the um, gloss gel or the other mediums like that, that is actually uh, very similar to this paint. So you're not gonna get it any thicker. You're just going to get the same thing. You're just gonna get more transparency to your colors. So, um, if you want more of those peaks kind of going on, yeah, definitely go with the extra, extra heavy. So as you can see, I'm just using the, um, the S61 palette knife. I did use the, uh, the flat edge there and I'm just dragging it in just little chunks. And it's hard to kind of see. It's really, really coming up dark on the uh, camera, but it's, it's got a lovely purple kind of going on. That's really quite fantastic but it has all of those textures. And as it dries, that will stay, which is fun. Can we tell them one more time what colors those were? This is the Iron Oxide Black, the Ultramarine Blue Deep, and just a touch of white, just to kind of desaturate that blue and give it um, a little bit of, oh, and I'm sorry, I actually did have the Matter Lake Hue. I used the last of that as well. So it has a little bit of the purple where the, the red and the blue kind of came together, which is, So, I'm sure you all don't want to sit here and wait for this to dry. <laughs> uh, as much fun as that would be, we're just gonna, boom, pretend like that already happened. And clearly, I had better tape lines the first time <laughs> I did it. Um, thank you. And so, uh, what I actually did, uh, so you don't do the same struggles that I just did, I put my tape down on a uh, self-healing cutting mat and I just draw, uh, drew a razor blade across the, uh, like an accurate um, razor blade, the number 11, is that what it is? I, I'll grab it later. But uh, just one of those razor blades, the cutting blades, and I just drew it across diagonally and then I could very easily put that back on. And I, as you can see, added more of the tape lines here on the outside. So. I am going to, excuse me, um, actually do some flowers for you guys today. Um, mostly because I will get probably more and more intricate with my art designs as I get more comfortable. And hopefully I can't mess up flowers. <laughs> um, oh, the other thing to know with impasto painting, uh, this right here disposable palette pad. 
Uh, I like the gray. That's my own personal preference because the, the neutral tone really allows me to see my colors. But uh, when you're doing this impasto painting, you are going to kind of burn through the surface where you're mixing your paints just because you're mixing so much. So it's kind of nice to have the ability to just rip it off, toss it in the garbage, and go. So um, I did... I was trying to be prepared. So uh, I printed out a couple of different flower reference pictures just to kind of see, like, here's a really pretty poppy. Um, maybe I'll do a poppy today. Um, daisies. We could do tulips. Uh, dahlia. And I think jasmine. Um, so this is really blown up. Uh, the cool thing about doing this is that you can, especially with the flowers, you can make it up. Everyone knows the basic flower shape. Oh, sorry. I do actually want to show you, um, since this is still kind of wet. This is the catalyst shaper. Sorry, I just realized I never touched those. <laughs> so um, the cool thing about these is that if you just kind of drag it into your artwork, it gives you these really cool textures. Um, you could drag it a little bit less than I am now and it would give you the texture without the white scratches because that's the board coming back out. But um, it definitely gives you these really fun things where you can do circles. Um, you can do all kinds of things with those. So just wanting to show you guys optional techniques. But let me grab this. So let's do so how this nice purpley blue kind of desaturated background I want to do some kind of lighter flowers on it so they really pop and I did the tape lines here so just like I can do here I'm gonna break that border with my leaves and the flowers and stuff that come off um, just so I can kind of have a little bit more of a visual interest um, just because I can. Just make sure. Oh, palette knives are so easy to clean. Look at that. A little bit of water right there. Um, let's go with a really pretty red. This is the Matter Lake Hue. And I'm going to use, there's a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm not going to mix these just yet and have a little blob of white as well. I'm not 100% sure exactly how I want to go about this. So if I mix my red and my yellow, I get this kind of orangey tone which I like, but I think I'm gonna have to stick with more red than the yellow. Again, this is why we swatch our colors. You have to swatch your colors. Um, I guess technically you don't have to. You don't have to do anything I say, but you should. You should always swatch your colors, otherwise you're guessing. <laughs> um, I'm going to use this really fun T35 palette knife. It is a round shape and gives you, I mean, it almost looks like a flower petal right there. I mean, look at how pretty that is. Um, I'm going to just grab a blob of this red, just a touch of the white, maybe a touch of yellow. Now, when I put this on my palette knife, uh oh, I got a little bit on the last slide. I'm just going to use my finger. There we go. Um, I don't really want to get it on the top, okay? because that's not where I'm going to be blobbing my, my paint on. I want it to stay on the back side here. Um, and how you actually apply it, um, like the, the motion and how you put it down on your canvas, is how it's really going to be affected um, and what it's going to look like. So if you need to, practice a couple times on your, your Soho paper palette um, or a surface that you're not really married to. Um, otherwise, you know, you can put it on here to have some fun, you know, go crazy, do a couple of flowers here and there, um, just to kind of experiment with it. So I'm going to do one, let's 
let's do one here. And flower petals overlap. Don't do one, then two, although I guess technically I kind of did a little bit here where I did those, um, like the five flower petals, but they still overlap just a bit. All right. Now I do want to kind of clean that up just a little bit. I think I'm going to use that yellow ochre. There we go. Now I'm going to use my ultramarine deep. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to need one more than that. Look at that. I'm almost already through my tube. Got to buy. You got to get the big tubes guys. They're worth it. I swear. All right, now I'm gonna make a little bit of the, um, what's the bottom part of the flower where it's actually green? The stem. The, well, it's not the stem, the actual part, but it's the little like leafy thing that comes out the bottom. Where are my pictures? Well, this doesn't show it very well, but it's, it's just under here where the actual flower meets the stem. Usually have um, like as, you know, your flowers blossom they they have that green coating and it kind of unfolds like that um, that is what I'm going to kind of pop in down there so I'm gonna do my color theory mix some blue with some yellow and make it a pretty green now I don't want it to be crazy green I'm going to desaturate it a little bit with some yellow ochre because yellow ochre is not a perfect yellow it has you know the other different colors in it so it's not going to be a boom in your face kind of green now when you're doing uh like the leaves and stuff i i really like to use these pointier um palette knives this is the t15 um, and again you have to pay attention to how the paint is on your palette so if it's just blobbed way down here you're not going to get that nice sharp point And a little bit of red gut in there, and that's okay. It's completely okay. I got two questions while you're what you got? painting. Tell me, tell me. First one is, um, is it not advised to mist the paint to slow drying? Um, I don't think you're leaving it on there long enough. <laughs> I feel like that would honestly give you an additional step that you really, it's not necessary, just, um, yeah. I mean, you can use a, a retarder in it, um, but that is another medium, like it just slows down the drying time, which is pretty fun um, and kind of allows you to have a little bit more work time with your paints. Uh, but I have never honestly seen the need for, um, uh, drying retarder so far. Second one. Does that, does that answer your question, I hope? I do barely I do very <laughs> heavily textured paintings, but use golden molding paste either mixed in the paint or painted painted it after it's dry on the canvas. Why use impasto rather than molding paste? Uh, the reason why is because I don't have to mix anything with my acrylics. Um, I like to paint with my colors. I mean, you absolutely can do the paste on top of your canvas uh, before you, um, sorry, I'm trying to like paint and talk at the same time. My brain just shut down a little bit. Um, you can absolutely uh, use the modeling paste to kind of almost like a sculpture and then paint on top of that. Um, I, that's something that I've done before and I really love it. But um, the other thing that I like to do personal, it's all personal preference, you know, um, I like to paint with my colors. So, you know, I like to see what I got going on when I lay it down. Oh, and the way that I just got that nice little, um, I don't know if you can see it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Almost looks like a leaf kind of vein going through there is I just laid it down and then picked it up like straight up. That'll give you that texture. 
So let's see if I can do it again. Let's see if I can recreate this. Ha ha! Little leaf blob. Actually, I think I have enough on my palette knife to continue. But yeah, the um, back to what I was talking about. Uh, the the cool thing is that the Lucas Pastos already has all of that thickness to their paint already mixed in. Same thing with the uh, heavy body acrylics that was mentioned earlier. Um, it's it's already there. You don't have to mix in anything, which um, especially with the person who is worried about like how long it takes to dry. If it dries fast enough to where you're gonna have to mix in some kind of a drying retarder. If you're not mixing mediums into your paint um, or anything like that, then you don't actually have to worry about, um, I guess, losing that time additionally. So that is one way of applying, and I'm sorry, I don't think I'm gonna actually be able to finish this piece, but that is the one way of applying uh, this impasto, uh, the, the Lucas Pastos paint. The other thing that I wanted to show you that is so fun is a little unorthodox. Uh, it's a piping bag. Now this one I actually uh, did an experiment on just to kind of see if I could save it. So I piped out It's funny because lots of people in the comments are saying, piping bag. Just like, no, just like cake decorating. Cake it's like cake, yeah, it's absolutely. Just, um, if you have little kids around, tell them, no, no, this is not icing and you don't eat this. So I actually piped out a couple of these little flowers and then I put, um, I actually was using the press and seal just because I uh, didn't have anything else on me. I was going to use saran wrap, but that's the one that I was, uh, had access to, access to words. Um, so I wanted to double check to see if I could save it, which absolutely my paint is still wet in there, which is kind of cool. Um, so once you put your piping tip on there, this is filled with acrylic. Um, it's a couple of different colors. I think this is the uh, Matter Lake, a little bit of yellow, white, um, clearly, and uh, that peachy tone it comes from the, the mixture of the, the red and the yellow coming through. So if you actually pipe it through, you can very easily, boop, look how fun that is. Now, I piped these yesterday. They're already 100% dry, so I can pick up my little paint blob. Look how fun that is. <laughs> um, the other thing that I really, really, really wanted to try was, and I also experimented with um, the leaf tip with uh, a couple of the different greens, which is pretty fun. Um, but again, I did this on the paper palette um, and they peel right off, which is so easy. So the one thing I really wanted to try was get this, um, the red, and kind of do these really fun, um, oh, I just touched, I just touched my paint, whoops. Uh, get these really fun uh, kind of petal shapes going and then peel them off of here and then do a blob of paint and kind of stick them in. You could also maybe do that with, um, uh, if you're going to be doing a fish, like a koi fish. Uh, I did not do that here, but, um, it, you know, it, sky's the limit. You could maybe a dragon. Uh, there's all kinds of different things that you could use that texture. Um, but like this right here, look how cool that leaf is. And I mean, I also believe you might be able to even take scissors and cut them. I wonder, I wonder. Yeah, so like if I needed to like just chop my leaf into little two little bits, um, I just did that with scissors. It's completely pliable, um, but it is, I piped these yesterday, this paint dries so quick. Um, they're like, they're completely dry, um, but they still have that slight flexibility because that's acrylic. Acrylic is kind of almost like you're painting with plastic. Um, but the one thing I did want to check to see, let me add in some white here. Mm. Blob this down real quick. Nope, I need more paint. 
I always need more paint, man. Nope, nope, see? Don't have enough paint on my... You use way more paint than you think, which is okay. And plus it's, at the end of the day, nice and, nice and textured, which is fun. But I definitely wanted to attempt to see if this would work. So, and granted it's like the same shape, but I just wanted to blob. Fun. Oh, cool. um, so there's the center of my flower and it looks it looks so weird but I love it um, so yeah if I wanted to I could also pipe straight onto this bat or onto my uh, panel just little flowers or leaves or anything um, and this uh, piping bag I actually just got from my grocery store uh, I would tell you what the name of that is but it's completely regional so <laughs> um, it, it doesn't matter. Usually in the baking section, you can find them. Um, but yeah, that's, it's super fun. Um, and then if you want to continue on with the different colors for leaves, um, the way I did actually use this is that I liked to lay down, uh, where my leaves were first. And I honestly didn't go into this with the plan. I'm just kind of playing with it. Um, <laughs> So that way, because this is the one problem I wanted to, to show you. If you lay down your flower first and you're trying to do a leaf and you're trying to go around your petal, it's not the easiest and I just pulled in some of my, um, my paint. Uh, so that's where the, you know, if you actually do all the different little pieces on your um, palette and then kind of stick them in. Um, actually, I wonder if I can do that here. That might be fun. Yeah, yeah, look at that. The flower has a leaf now. So that way, um, if you actually, you know, do something like that, um, you won't pull your, your reds into there, uh, but that might be a happy accident. It might be something that you can experiment with um, and see if you like it. And I just got paint all over the back side of that. Whoops, forgot that was wet. Question for you real quick. Okay, shoot. The dried background example, actually a couple questions. Mm -hmm. The dried background example doesn't seem to have the impasto texture that the wet demo had. Is there a reason for that difference? Uh, the reason why is because it's really hard to actually see. Uh, it does have a texture and when I put it on there, I wonder if you can actually see this if I tip it a different direction. Um, it does have some texture on there. I didn't actually apply a whole lot of texture, but you can feel it. Uh, especially at the edges here. I think I actually went a lot heavier with my application on the example that I was doing for you guys. Uh, and that's one of those things that as you apply it, you're gonna kind of figure out what works best. So I do like this and I actually, cause I can feel a little bit of the texture, but it's not very prominent, which kind of works for when you start covering it up with other stuff. You, I personally didn't wanna detract from what I was gonna put on there but if you want more texture, absolutely go crazy. I mean, I put a lot more texture on this, um, but that was a lot more of a, a heavier paint application. So that way when I start going in and doing the, the flowers and stuff, like on top of that, I can very easily uh, lay those on top of here. And now that it's fully dry, it won't pick up any of that texture, um, but it will lay right on top of it, which is pretty fun. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is that with the color shapers, before, before I forget, actually I can probably do it with one of those. These are one of those things where if I did get a little bit of my paint into uh, the green here, I could very easily kind of bring it back. Kind of a thing, yeah. And it's gone, which is super easy. Um, or if you wanted to, you can actually take like a blob of paint, paint just like this and start manipulating it in ways that um, very Van Gogh-like. 
or if I put on a different color on there. It's a lot of green on that, but that's okay. You can kind of start almost like mixing the paint on your palette kind of a thing. Um, it's just a way of kind of like moving the paint around, you know? And that. So all of these textures that I'm showing you will stay just as they are after it dries, which is very cool. Um, because you, I've done that before with like um, acrylics and I've tried to really get a whole lot of like texture, especially when you're doing something like this. I'm, I'm essentially destroying this, I'm sorry. If, if that bothers some of you, but if you got some of that texture like that on your, um, uh, with your normal uh, everyday acrylics like uh, the Lucas Krill Studio or even their fluid uh, mediums like Golden has a high flow, you're never going to retain your textures like that. That's the entire point of uh, me using these paints because I don't have to mix anything into them and I can just do that and it stays, which is super, super cool. What's the maximum height you've achieved with the impasto? I think you can go up to an inch, um, which is pretty surprising. Pain. Yeah, um, like here. I'll just it's kind of I can see that it's kind of shrinking down just because I put just such a big blob right there but I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna show you guys uh, tomorrow once it's I'm gonna also double check that it's 100% sure but I will 100% uh, dry not sure um, I'm going to leave that just like it is and then I'm going to send a post on the Jerry's live uh, Facebook group and possibly also my Instagram and I'm going to show you what it looks like tomorrow. Um, but that's, I mean, I've, it, I think it can go up to an inch is about the, the level of retention that it can actually take, which is kind of fun. So I think those are all the different techniques. There's also different, um, palette knives, like I've said before. Uh, these are just a couple that I've grabbed. So, um, that's impasto painting guys. Two more questions. Okay, yeah. Does it always dry matte? And are there different levels? Can you have like a gloss? Can you have a matte? Can you have a satin? <laughs> yes, yes to all. Um, that's the, the Lucas Krill uh, Pastos dries to this nice uh, matte finish, which is, I personally love. It is, uh, it is almost a little satiny, just ever so slight, but not enough to where I think you guys are gonna be able to see it on camera. Um, but if you want to uh, have it be glossy, mix in a gloss gel. If you want it to be um, a satin finish, you can mix in a, like a satin medium. There's also, uh, oh, what's the, it's got marble dust in it. Modeling paste? Modeling paste, yeah. That modeling paste um, does have marble dust in it, so that will actually turn all of your colors because you're mixing it with like a white kind of a the model, uh, marble dust. So it actually kind of makes all of your paint appear slightly lighter, um, which is something you just have to mess with. But um, I think that might also have more of like a matte finish to it. Um, there's just, there's so many different options, especially like Golden makes so many different mediums. And if you end up doing an entire painting and you hate that it's matte or you hate that it's gloss, you can always varnish over it and then completely change the surface texture to be glossy, satin, um, anything like that. And is there another question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they are curious if you could use glue or if you should use something else with the um, when you do the pre-dried paint and you're attaching it to the... Paint. Just use paint. I mean, you can use glue but then you run the risk of it having a different finish than your actual paint. If you use paint to adhere paint, it's going to just look like you painted it like that. Um, that was the other thing I forgot to show. Oh, I don't think I can show you on that because it's already done. But this right here, um, this uh, lotus flower that I, I did, these uh, bigger petals that I did, the, I did those the first layer and then I let it 100% dry and then I did another layer on top of it. Um, and then if I even wanted to attach one of the dry ones, I would probably just put a blob of paint right there and then squish it in. Um, just because you don't have to put like a ton like I did here. You can just put the tiniest amount to where it's hidden. But that way you don't have that problem of it just not looking right, if that makes sense. Any other questions? Mm -hmm.
So at an inch tall, what is the likelihood of that glob falling off? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I've seen pretty thick paintings hanging. There is there's actually yeah. an artist who uh, paints with a piping bag, yeah. and he does these incredible Jeez. landscapes, and they like they're thick. So if I leave only one blob on an entire like flat panel, the likelihood of it being bumped and like knocking it off is a lot higher than if you have an entire textured uh, panel where it, it's all kind of pretty thick and kind of has those uh, peaks and valleys in it. So the likelihood of this falling off, I think it's pretty high. Also because I put it straight onto the um, super smooth surface. So there's a lot less tooth for it to like really grab on. Had I put it on this textured paint surface, it probably would have really grabbed on a little bit more. But um, just because I mean like, I will try to knock it off tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> that um, where a canvas panel comes in very handy. Yeah, yeah. The canvas, the canvas also does have a lot more of a tooth. It's just that when you're painting larger, you do run the risk of it sagging, which is kind of a bummer if you do this entire gorgeous painting and then all of a sudden it just goes bloop. Not, and I mean the canvas itself, the structure, not your paints sagging. Um, and this is this is definitely one of those things where I. I wouldn't paint it on an easel up. I would paint it either flat like this, or I would paint it um, maybe at a just ever so slight angle, but I wouldn't make it really, like easel wouldn't be the best way to have this set up. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they keep coming. Yay! <laughs> Feel free. I'm, I'll be here until you guys stop asking me questions. <laughs> Are all or most mediums light fast? Um, if mixing light fast pigment and wondering if the medium isn't light fast, if it would ruin that? Um, I think it's really the pigment that's the light fast that you need to worry about. Yeah. Um, because everything has different binders. So if you take a light fast pigment and you mix it in with an acrylic binder, you're going to have a light fast acrylic. Just because that light fast rating has to do with the pigment. If you mix it in with an oil paint, you have a light fast oil paint. If you mix it in with um, Elmer's glue, you have a light fast Elmer's glue. Uh, granted, that will still probably re-wet because that glue does that. Um, it's just, it, it's really more the pigment than the binder. Did you use the palette knives to make the lotus petals or the piping bag? I used the palette knives. I think I actually used the round one, which is currently stuck in water. Oh, uh, let me just double check. Yeah, I definitely used that round one. Um, so what I did is I, I squished it on. And then as I was removing my palette knife, I actually kind of rolled it up and pulled it to where the tip there uh, kind of had that point. Um, and you can see kind of right here, especially like that's where I squished my palette knife in. And then when I rolled it up, it just kind of kept that top layer coming, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up doing that down here with these guys. I think I might have actually used more of the pointy, uh, this one, for the bottom petals. And I decided I really didn't like it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna go over the top of it again. And this is actually, um, that was another thing I forgot to tell you guys. There's so much with the impasto. There's so many possibilities. This. I actually ended up doing just this, like, kind of pink uh, paint. And then once it was 100% cured dry, I went back in with another, like a paint brush, and then painted the, the surface. So right here where um, you can kind of see the, the tips of the petals, um, I actually touched it with a little bit of white. And then down here, I touched it with more of the, I actually, with this one, I think I used Permanent Rose, which is one of the other colors we had kind of floating around the, the studio. This does not come in this set, but you can get it as an individual tube, um, but that was the, the permanent rose mixed in with a little bit of white, and then I blobbed on a little bit of yellow. Actually, I think I blobbed, nope, I blobbed on some orange first, then I let that dry, and then I blobbed on yellow. So it's, it's layering, and so if I were to uh, want to achieve that one inch kind of deep um, paint, I could do it in smaller layers, which would also look really cool. Um, like if you're doing like a snake or something that kind of has a textural thing going to it, 
you could have maybe the whole thing coming up and then add the scales on later, which would be kind of really awesome. If you like snakes, I do not like snakes. Someone's gonna really not like me for that, but I'm, it's okay. <laughs> What's the full curing time until you can varnish them? Ooh, I would give it at least a week. Um, I would really give it a, a good chunk of time, um, a week. I mean, it's acrylic. It dries pretty fast, um, but for depending on how thick you put it on, I would say about a week. Then, have you ever used larger trials, like larger tools, like a mason's trowel or something like that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually used uh, a cake icing. Uh, like, you know those really, really long ones that you're supposed to like smooth out the side yeah. of the cake, but they're like this thick. I've used that before. Um, I've, you can use all kinds of things. I know Bob Rankin actually has used a hair comb before. Mm -hmm. You can use all kinds of things. If you want to go really big, absolutely use a trowel. But, um, I mean, these palette knives do get pretty large. Um, and depending on your application, you can kind of squish it in and manipulate it to where it does cover a larger area. You just, if you use a smaller tool than you're really going for, you're probably not going to get that thickness of the paint that you're looking for. Looking back through. Any other questions? Do you leave the white sections as they are? Um, I was going to. I honestly have not a clue if I'm going to just leave it like this. Um, that was something where I, I kind of just wanted to break up my canvas with a little bit more of a visual interest by having my background. Instead of having like a solid square like this, um, I just wanted to have kind of a chunk of white kind of coming through. Just so when I laid down all the different flowers, it would it's mostly going to be hidden, but you might see pops of it coming through. Um, but yeah, I probably will leave it just as it is. Um, you don't have to paint it. That's the cool thing is that it's a primed surface, so it's already nice and nice and smooth and ready to go. And it looks it looks nice as long as I don't have paint on my hands and smudge all over it, <laughs> <laughs> which I've done before. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys do have any other questions about this technique that I did not touch on, feel free to message me. Uh, if you're on Facebook, I have my own host page, which is under Emmy's, it's Emmy Host of Jerry's Live, that one. I believe my uh, team is gonna also be linking it down below. Uh, if you're on the Jerry's Live uh, Facebook group, you can always post your questions there. Uh, not only would I answer those questions, but so will everybody else who's part of the group. It's it, a community of artists who are helping artists and we're exploring the wide world of all types of things that we can do, which is so much fun and you should join. I do believe you have to answer a question to actually be admitted into the the group, but it's it's not a hard one, I promise. Make sure you're not a robot. <laughs> yeah, we don't want robots. Oh, well, I kind of want robots to join the team, <laughs> but... We'll save that for future. Um, but other than that, if you are on Instagram, you can always find me at misscakes.art. Uh, you can send me a direct message or if I, I'm going to, to try to destroy this little blob for you guys. I'm going to, to post pictures of this on my Facebook group and on my Instagram so you guys can see me uh, try to like pop this off of the canvas and see how how difficult it is. I'll, I'll post a video there. But it's misscakes.art for my Instagram. You can always send me questions that way. But uh, that was impasto painting. I hope you guys get to experiment with this. And if you do, please tag me in it. I want to see it. Uh, post it to the Facebook groups. Post it to my Facebook page. Tag me on Instagram. The other thing is that on any of those platforms, if you do tag JL181, That'll let us actually find it a lot easier. And uh, definitely be sure to also hit the like button on this video so we can get all those likes, please. Um, the other thing is that um, I think that was, nope, sorry. Uh, I'd lost my train of thought on that one. I think that I already covered that. My Instagram, I, I think I need another cup of coffee. <laughs>
Uh, but uh, please be sure to join me next week. I believe I'm actually going over a new product and it is limited edition. So I hope you guys join me. Um, it's going to be a whole lot of fun and I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration and it inspires you to do more art. So thank you guys so much and have a good night.